Next on stage, we have Frankie So, who's representing the Carbon Electronics Project. Uh, he's from NC State. The project is also uh, local at uh, NC Central and UNC. Frankie's new to North Carolina, so I'd encourage you guys all to uh, say hi to him and introduce yourself. Um, Frankie comes to us after a long, illustrious career in uh, academia, big corporations, and startups. Um, he's got a really interesting background, and I asked him what's his favorite part of North Carolina thus far. And he started off with, well, I lived for a while in New Jersey. I was like, ugh, where's that going, right? <laughs> and he said, New Jersey says that they're the garden state. Clearly not true. North Carolina is the garden state, so good for him. Frankie is part of the material science and engineering department at NC State, and that is a department that has seen a whole lot of growth in the last six years. They've actually moved from ranking 31st six years ago, and now they're at 15th and still growing. So it's programs like this ROI that allow us to bring individuals like Frankie here. I was speaking with uh, Justin Schwartz, who's another investigator on this project, and he said that um, Frankie is helping us usher in the carbon electronics revolution to North Carolina. And he says that humanity has been really defined by the materials that we've used. You think about the Stone Age, the Iron Age, the Bronze Age, now we're in the Silicon Age, right? And there's this continuous drive, faster, denser, cheaper, and silicon's coming up against a wall now. And so there's a number of researchers that are seeking that next material. What are we gonna do that's gonna help us prevent the sustainability issues of silicon? And enter carbon, right? Very abundant, it's a large portion of our bodies along with all the things around us. Uh, abundant, inexpensive, and possibly the ROI team is looking to transform it into the next generation of electronic and photonic devices. Think Internet of Things, think sensors, think energy generation, think energy storage. And so I'd like to bring Frankie up and tell us some more. Okay, thank you, Ginger, for the introduction. Um, today I'm going to tell you uh, the technologies that I've been working on in the last 25 years, um, organic electronics. Um, you may ask why is organic um, so interesting? Now, I'm not talking about f uh, food, the previous speaker talked about food, we're not talking about organic food, we're talking about electronic materials that are made primarily from carbon-based uh, compound. Now, we all f um, know about Cree. Cree is a major manufacturer of uh, LED, so we know LED. Um, but LED, what is unique about LED is because it's made with, have to be made at very high temperature. Um, you have to make the material at 1,000 degrees Celsius, very, very high temperature, and you have to make it on a specific substrate, which is uh, sapphire. And when you do electronic materials with organic, you are opening up a big possibility, you can do it on glass, you can do it on plastic, or you can do it even on fabrics, right? So let me show you one example. I brought an um, example with me. Okay. This is a uh, solar cell, a panel, okay? Um, that, is, that was made by row-to-row -row printing. So it's like printing newspaper. Now what's the big deal about that? If you look at, um, you know, anyone you see um, solar panel mounted on rooftop, uh, rooftop, right? Typically, they are made with silicon. A two by four panel weighs about 50 pounds. Now today, um, if you want to install um, a solar uh, panel system on your rooftop, majority of the cost is not the solar panel because solar panel, the price of solar panel has really come down a lot in the last uh, 10 years the majority of the cost is really the installation. Now imagine now you have, you know, you have to, every panel weigh about 50 pounds and you have to, you have, you know, hundreds of them, you need to move it from, uh, from the ground to the, to the rooftop. It's quite a challenge, right? And you also have to worry about the loading on your roof. A lot of people are concerned about, well, if I put that many panels on my roof, is this going to damage my roof, okay? this. You are two by four, it's probably weigh about a pound. Not an issue, all right? So this is part of it. The next one, let me show you some example. Okay, this is uh, Harry Ade. He's, uh, he's the leader of the, 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 the cluster. Okay, 
On the top, you saw that TV. Now, that TV is um, made with um, organic uh, material. It's called OLED. Okay, it's like an LED made with organic material. It is very, very thin. If you go to Best Buy, you will see them, you, you look at that uh, display compared with the regular TV, you say, wow, this is fantastic, okay? And, and so that's already in the, in the market. The second one, which is a fairly new, is the, the bottom. Um, those are the um, Apple Watches, okay? Now, what about what, you know, some of you might have an Apple Watch. Um, you might not know that the display is made of plastic, okay? So if you buy an Apple Watch, particular one that has a sapphire um, cover glass, you can smash it. You can, you can use any tool from your kitchen you, to smash it, it's not going to break. Now, if you use a hammer, a hammer will break it, okay? But if you drop it, it's not going to break because the display is made on plastic, not on glass. Now, you know, you know we all have uh, smartphones. The number one problem failure in smartphones is the display breakage. We all see cracked screen, okay? With OLED, you won't see that because it's made on plastic, okay? So I'd like to spend the rest of the time tell you um, some of my uh, personal story related to the technology development. Um, Jinjo mentioned that I have an interest, interesting background. So I just want to highlight one of the experience that I uh, worked with in my previous career uh, before coming to um, NC State. I started my career uh, with a company, um, Motorola, um, um, developing OLED technology back in the early 90s. There I faced two barriers. Uh, the first one is the technology wasn't ready. A lot of people did not believe that it would work. The second one is that we have an IP issue, uh, intellectual properties, because the original patents, the fundamental patent was owned by Eastman Kodak. So after working for the company for about a few years, we, we managed to solve the technical problem. We showed to the management that it works. And the dream, my dream was to put the display in the cell phone. Um, so after that, the, uh, the CTO of, the company, of Motorola said, okay, Frankie, I'm gonna put aside $20 million. If you can find ways to get around the Kodak patents, you have this $20 million and you can build your facility to commercialize the technology. And that was around uh, year 2000, and that was the beginning of the downturn of the company. So I lost that $20 million. At the end, they sold my patents, a, a portfolio of uh, 60 patents to a company called Universal Display for $50 million worth of stocks. Now, Universal Display, I'm not sure you heard about this company. Universal Display now is a $2 billion company, so that stock, those stock worth about $300 million. Too bad I, I didn't own any one of them. Um, so, and then I, after a couple uh, Korean move, I um, uh, moved to uh, University of Florida, um, the Gatherland. Uh, I was there for 10 years and I was kind of tired of Gators. Uh, so I was uh, contacted by Justin last year and said, you know, they, they said, Frankie, would you like to join us? After I visited the first time, I was very impressed by the university, number one. The facility is fantastic. It's really the, a first-rate university, particularly in the Centennial campus. And the second is really the environment, because I consider myself as a entrepreneur and inventors. And, um, and I, in, in Florida, I started, uh, I was the founder of three uh, startup. And one of the problems we faced was we, we have trouble hiring people. Nobody wants to move to Gatorland, okay? Uh, people always, by the way, people always say, um, gators, meat, tastes like chicken. Um, indeed, some of them actually are not a fake gator meat. Not, they, they actually serve chicken and claim it's gator. But that's not the point. Uh, so after that, I, um, I was very impressed by the, by the area because um, here, this is very, very culturally very diverse and also there are a lot of high-tech personnel here, and I see this as an opportunity for myself. So um, after a short ne ne negotiation, I um, accepted the offer and moved here uh, uh, last July. And since I moved, um, I'm very impressed. I have um, 
established a lot of collaboration with uh, um, within NC State and also with uh, uh, faculty at uh, um, UNC Charlotte. I mean uh, uh, UNC Chapel Hill. And let me show you what I see the future of um, uh, carbon uh, um, organic electronics. Um, as I mentioned, this is the I see this is the future. I talk about uh, solar. Okay. Now, and also, if you look at the upper left-hand corner, that is uh, lighting. Now, um, you know LEDs are made with chips, and you can make light bulb in the form of light bulb, right? But OLED can be, you can make it um, on plastic, any, any software you want, any form, right? So you can make very unique lighting uh, devices. So the LED, OLED is actually, um, is a chandelier, right? You don't have to do anything, and lighting designer really light OLED for, for lighting. And then because of the way you can make uh, electronic flexible, you can do e-paper, you can do um, rollable uh, tablet, that is going to be the future. And then you move to the, um, another area is, you know, in, um, in triangle area, you know, biotech is, is, uh, has a very, very strong presence. And one of the main advantage of, uh, of uh, organic is that we can do bio sensing and, and imaging. And this is an area, area that I'm expanding into now. Um, so, and this is gonna impact um, manufacturing um, and also uh, healthcare monitor devices. So, um, in summary, I'm very excited uh, to be here. And as a professor, I can see myself not only educating uh, young scientists, um, this is an opportunity for me to make an impact on the local economy. Thank you very much.